Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards and today we're taking a look at a keyboard I have been wanting to review for some time now. It is from Akko and it is the ACR Pro 68. ACR because this is an acrylic, a CNC acrylic keyboard. Now, I like plastic, I like aluminum keyboards, but for me, acrylic if sound is one of the primary things that one is looking for, I think acrylic lends itself to the greatest range. Um, I think you can get thocky, you can get creamy, you can get clacky. Um, now, not all acrylics are made the same, but from what I've seen of this and from what I've heard from other people that own it, it should be that. So today we're just going to be doing an unboxing, a uh, regular review and a sound test, but I will be coming back to this keyboard and I'm going to try or I'm going to aim to get all three of those sound signatures or as close as possible to it. So one that is really nice and clacky and loud, one that is nice and docky and deep, and one that's just creamy and marbly. So, but today let's go ahead and take a look at it. All right. So opening up the box, we see that we have a very cool um, tape sticker. I, based on that cutout there, I'm going to say that can be used for the back as a tape um, mod, but I have to take a look further. And it also looks like we have a case foam that, I don't know what those are, but um, it looks like it's meant for the back of the PCB. Before we take the keyboard out, let's see what accessories come in the box. So we've got the black and pink. Now, I already have this keycap set, but I don't mind having another one. This is one of the features I like about a lot of the Akko pre-builds. Not only do they come pre-loaded with keycaps, they give you all the rest of the keycaps. In case you want to switch it out, use it on another keyboard, you want to switch out some of the keys on this keyboard. Not not anybody else that I can think of really does that. I think there was one keyboard I received before that had a few extra keys, not an entire keycap set, but this is basically the entire uh, black and pink ASA keycap set that I have that came in the collector's box. We also have a very nice and thick rubberized USB-A to USB-C cable. Oh, it looks like there's some extra keys in there. They really... And we have a full set of keys here. And even ISO keys, even though this is an ANSI. And we have one of the better switch pullers. Uh, these are actually original, originally IC chip pullers. Now, it also looks like we have stick-on feet. Now, I've got to say, this is a pretty interesting um, addition or accessory. Some people are fine with the angles that the keyboard comes with. But the fact that it includes extra feet so that you can set different angles of typing and they even have a little rubberized foot there um, it just makes for oh and i just took it off it makes for a very cool design and it gives the option to the end user in case you know do you need the height or are you fine with the default height or angle of typing um, or do you want to have something different so having that choice is nice um, and of course we can't forget our trusty Allen wrench uh, to go ahead and open her up. And this little baggie, let's see what we have. There's a few things here. All right, looks like we have some extra gaskets. It's in here. We have a key cap puller. But then it looks like we have an extra daughter board. Hmm. I'm not exactly sure what this is for, but i got to guess I will find out. And I'm going to guess these gaskets have a different bit. At least they feel rigid. So maybe it's a little bit more of a rigid gasket feel. And then we have these gasket socks. So there might be different levels of flex, though. I'm, I'm not 100% certain. And here is the Akko ACR 68 Pro or Pro 68. Ah, I've got to say she's a beauty. And of course... One thing that I always appreciate about Akko products, their switches, their keycaps, their keyboards, is that we have a quality inspector card. So somebody hand inspected this 
to make sure that everything was fine before going out because it's much cheaper to catch a defect at the factory and never ship it out than it is to ship out to a customer and then have to pay all the fees and also deal with you know the bad bad complaints so i appreciate that Akko does this so we do have a user manual as well uh, that goes over the uh, different key mappings in windows and how to use the function keys because obviously we're at 68 percent and the different hot keys all right so let's take a look at this lovely keyboard so all right there's that sticker that we see that also would be the sticker for it matches the sticker that would go down at the bottom and it's actually protected oh no that's actually a weight oh hold on i thought that was a sticker this is actually a weight that's why because this is it feels very substantial but we can see the cutout there for the blocker for the sticker that comes with it so when i do go to modify this i'll definitely be using that but i i gotta say i love their little Akko character, and he's playing with all the switches. I think it's cute. I think Akko really needs to lean into this. Now, this one, I love. I love fat bezels, but I am a kid of the 80s, so that's kind of one of those retro things. I also like the fact that this is, it's very similar to an Icky 68, um, how it has the badge here. It would be nice if this was replaceable. I do not believe it is taken off protective layer but i do not believe this is a replaceable badge no i don't think that comes out so we see that we have these lovely asa keys i'm a big fan of sa asa um but let's go ahead and see what we got under here oh we've got the crystal switches i have not yet had a chance uh to play with these oh they're stock. Huh. That's kind of surprising. I would have expected the switches to at least be pre-lubed. Um, now, granted, we are dealing with a PC plate. Oh, wow. Look at that flex. Wow. <laughs> you can literally... Bottom out with it. <laughs> Although them not being lubed, I really don't hear any ping on the keyboard itself. And it's only when I flick the switch that I hear the ping. But on press, no. Yeah. Now them being clear, they're going to let a lot of this RGB through. Now we are dealing with um, a wired only model. This is not uh, Bluetooth or wireless. So for the RGB, let's go ahead and plug it in and see what we've got. Ah, oh, I love the port. There's barely any recess. So most USB cables are going to work just fine with this. Woo, that's instant on. So those RGBs, let me see. Oh, they are... Not the dimmest, but they're definitely not the brightest. But I do like how they still can be seen between the keys. That's that highlight that looks really nice. Um, and it almost looks like, because it's, it's bouncing off of the inner board, it almost looks kind of like a halo or like the halo, but it's not. Um, now, obviously, this is north-facing, but with um, most Akko's newer switches and a lot of the newer switches, you're just not going to have north-facing interference anymore. So that shouldn't be an issue. But if you're going to get uh, shine-through keycaps, most shine-through keycaps are going to work just fine with the north-facing. Let's see what we got for stabilizers. All right, it looks like we have those uh, new Akko double-shot TPU stabilizers and they seem to be fairly well attached to the plate there's a little bit of looseness but it's not really that much it's i think it might be just because of the softness of the plastic plate but if we take these out oh yep there are 
not only are there pads below them, but we see that there's holes for screw on stabilizers. So that is always a plus. Whenever I see that on a motherboard, it makes me think, okay, this, there was a lot more thought put into this and it definitely can be upgraded further. Now, as far as the stabilizers go, these are the uh, double shot TPU. They actually have um, a TPU. You see that black part inside of there? That is a TPU to soften the, the noise, basically, or the, the plastic hitting against the metal wire. So these are gonna be pretty good off the bat. Their first revision, I think they had some issues with, but I think now they've gotten really good with these. And actually, I think I have a set that I ordered, but I haven't installed yet. So maybe I will, uh, there's, maybe I'll uh, use them on one of my next builds. Now we do have um, caps locks does change the color, which is always nice. So you can look down and see, hey, am I in caps lock mode? This, the bounce, this has got to be probably one of the flexiest keyboards I have ever taken a look at. I've got to say, I mean, it's just the amount of flex. Like I can bottom out with it. So there's definitely some room to do some, because I mean, there is no foam. They do include that back foam for this. So going to try some uh, combinations when I come back to this uh, with different foams and different fillers as well as the Tempest Tape Mod and I may even tighten up the stabilizers but uh, it's also this layout is one of my preferred lay layouts for a um 68% because it has the full size right shift and it has the um, regular one and a quarter uh, U right modifiers. So you're not going to, if you have a keycap set that's meant for a TKL or for a full size keyboard, it's going to work on here because you don't have to worry about trying to hunt down and find a 1.75 U, though this keycap set does include that. Now, the colors on this are just, uh, they're lovely. Um, the black, it is translucent, but it's not, I don't know, there's some translucent that's almost clear, so it almost looks like a smoky, I guess that would, what they call it. I'm not too fond of that, but this one is more of a, it's very dark, and I love the downward facing LED, so obviously that's something that I'm going to have to take into consideration when I come in here to mod it. And I, I love that gold badge, but though that makes me want to put black and gold on here, which I have in the ASA as well, which I may just do that. I am probably going to switch out um, the switches. I'm waiting on some Piano V3 Pros uh, to come in to give those a shot, but I still have some, um, I still have some cream V3 and some cream blue and some cream yellow V3 Pros. So I may try out one of those, but today we're just going to do the basic take a look at it do a stock sound test and see what it's like out of the box just the specs today we are taking a look at the Akko acr pro 68 a wired 68 percent pre-built from Akko that does include a full set of keycaps in this case black and pink asa double shot pbt it also includes crystal switches though they are unlubed it is a north facing three and five pin hot swap compatible keyboard that comes weighing in at 966 grams the chin of this keyboard sits at 26 millimeters above the typing surface while the back sits at 31 millimeters providing for a typing angle of five degrees now this keyboard does come with attachable feet that will add two different typing angles the width of this PCB is 1.2 millimeters, and it does have the ability for screw-in stabilizers. This keyboard manufacturer retail price is $115.99, though regularly goes on sale for below $100. All right, so today we took a look at the Akko ACR Pro 68. It is a nice 
very nice acrylic CNC'd, uh, 68% in the icky style, though it has a much thicker bezel, which for some of us, that's a good thing. Um, I, I consider it kind of a retro feature, but I like the fat bezels. I like bezels on my keyboards, but not on my phone. I did forget to cover that it does include um, plate and PCB silicone, as well as that extra uh, EVA foam that you could put down below the PCB. Um, I think some people are going to be a little unhappy about the north facing, but because, in my opinion, north facing interference with cherry keycaps is practically a thing of the past, unless you're dealing with older switches um because i've even seen cherry key caps now that will work with older switches without any interference at all so that i don't think should be an issue this definitely stands as one of the flexius gasket boards i have yet to come across i mean the flex on this is just incredible um this is controlled with the octo cloud driver which i have to say has gotten better uh, through its iterations and is almost on par with QMK by, but I think it'll serve the majority of people's needs as far as macros, uh, programming keys, um, RGB, all of that functionality. I think that this is a great keyboard for the price, especially considering the fact that it comes with an entire set of Akko double shot keycaps that normally run $50 or more. And then you do have the crystal switches. I think they run about the same as most other switches, like $15 for a 45-pack, 45, $45 but you'd have to get two packs of this. So say roughly $40 in switches. Um, well, actually, no, roughly $25 in switches if you're only counting per switch. But the value that this has, and especially because it has this acrylic CNC case, and like I said earlier, I truly believe that acrylic keyboards are the best middle ground in order for reaching your preferred sound. Because um, a lot of people have asked me, you know, oh, I've got a GMK67, how do I make it sound like a Zoom 75? Well, you're talking about an aluminum keyboard and a plastic keyboard. There's only so close you're gonna be able to get because a big part of the resonance or the sound tone that the keyboard makes is going to be the material of the case obviously yes the switch the plate the foams all play a part in it but the baseline is going to be set by the material that the case is made out of so anyway i am excited about this keyboard i am going to be coming back to it and again i am going to do a video my next video on this will be the things that i can do modifications that i can do in order to reach or as closely as possible reach all three of the popular sound profiles being clacky, thocky, and creamy slash poppy. I think I'll be able to do it with the different combinations of foam, different switches, and probably even some different keycaps, though I probably will just stay with the Akos. I want to thank Akko once again for sending me out this keyboard for review. Um, I'm going to have a lot of fun with this. Uh, and I'm actually going to make this my daily driver for right now to play around with it to see um, to see how I like it because I I have enjoyed Akko keyboards. I did use the um, the 5075 Via uh, for a while. It was my daily and quite enjoyed it. But Akko keyboards are definitely or have definitely become much better over the last couple of years, and their selection is just. It's growing every single day. It feels like I'm seeing a new Akko keyboard, but I think out of out of many of, I guess what we would call in stock brands, uh, I think Akko is definitely, if not king, they're they're up there. Um, their keyboards, in my opinion, um, deliver good quality for a decent price. Their customer service is really good. And they're in touch. They seem to be in touch with the community. They seem to be in touch with what's going on, what's popular, what's not. So, and they do a lot of things right, in my opinion. So I'm going to leave you guys with a stock sound test. So it's only got the plate PCB foam. I did not install anything. I haven't opened it up yet. So this is what it's going to sound like out of the box. I do hope that you guys enjoy. 
the sound test. If you guys have any ideas or any things that you'd like me to cover when I come back to mod this keyboard, please place them down in the comments below. Let's start a conversation. Until the next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on.